Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And I wanted to get on here and do a really, really quick, and it's gonna be quick because there weren't that many books, uh, May wrap up of all of the books that I read in May. And I have to tell you, um, I'm a little upset with myself. I'm currently at 43 books for the year, which that's actually really good. I'm very proud of myself for that, right? Um, and it's ac that's actually more books than I have read already this year than I read in a couple previous years. Now, last year, I did hit the goal of 100 books. That I think it was 100 or 101. Maybe it was just 100. I can't remember. I think my goal was 100 last year. So this year, I made my goal 102, which I think is something like eight books a month. If you're a reader, like I always get this comment on my vlogs. People are like, why do you care how many books you read and all that kind of stuff? But I feel like you're a reader, you get it. You know, like the Goodreads Reading Challenge. Because it's kind of like trying to outdo your, you know, best, I don't know, like how far you run or how fast you run if you're, you know, like a runner or an athlete or your best time and things like that. I think it's kind of like the same thing. But on another level, um, I love to read so much. And reading for me is... Be int being introduced to new characters or new worlds or being able to escape here, escape there, talk to people about books, you know? So the more books that I read, um, the more characters I'm introduced to, the more storylines I fall into, you know, and the more worlds I get to enter. And so that's for me why it's fun to read as many books as I possibly can. Also just because I want to see how many books I can read in a year, right? So May was not my best book and I actually got kind of stuck in a book. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I want to go in here and I read, for the month of May, I read, let's see, one, two, three, four, five uh, books. And I've already in June, I have read one book and I'm finishing, which is Pumpkin, which is the third book. Um, and the Julie Murphy, it's, it says a series, but it's not a series. The first one was Dumplin', the second one was Puddin', and the third one is called Pumpkin. And I have to tell you, it is such a great book. And I'm not going to do really a whole review of it over here right now. Um, I'll wait till next month when I do my wrap-up for June. But um, Pumpkin is about um, a, a gay teenager that's a senior in high school. His... Uh, Twin sister is a lesbian, and they live in Clover City, which is where Dumplin' and Puddin' took place. Actually, um, Millie, who is Puddin', and um, Willow Dean, who is Dumplin', are characters in this book. And not just cameo roles. Like, I love when Becky Albertalli does that in her books. But they're not just cameo roles. I mean, they're a part of the book. Like, they have lines and storylines, and they're a big part of it. So... I love that. Um, kind of a little bit more like Leah from the Simon verse, you know, books. And then she had Leah in the offbeat. It's kind of like that, but different. Um, it plays out in a different way. And, and a lot of the lessons that Dumplin learned in her book and Millie learned in her book um, play out. Uh, I said Dumplin and Millie. Well, Dumplin and Puddin or Willow Dean and Millie um, play out in their books. Like the things that they learn are kind of applied to what Pumpkin learns in his journey as well. And he is obsessed with drag. And so... I, as, as, as am I. And so he watches all these drag shows. Um, and of course, The Hideaway, which is in the book Dumplin', is a big part of this book as well. And it's about not really knowing what he wants to do as he goes forward. Now, he and his sister are both out, and they have very accepting families, um, or very accepting parents, which is kind of cool to read, especially during Pride Month. Um, it's just a fantastic book. And it's really about knowing what you deserve, and being willing to set boundaries for that and um, standing up for yourself and also realizing you don't have to be sure about every step that you make into your future. And it's beautifully done. There's fantastic music references. I won't ruin them for you, but like if you knew in Dumplin', it was like a lot of Dolly Parton, which because of Dumplin', she <laughs> makes an appearance as well in this. Not Dolly Parton herself, but the, the music. But there's so much other music because Pumpkin loves an entirely different kind of scene of music. Um, I just, it was so good. I literally listened to it on Audible in like two and a half days, I think, if not less than that. And I would have listened to it in one night if I had had the time. God knows, because I'm trying to finish the book for tomorrow for a true crime book club, which I picked and it's called Ice and Bone and it's um, about a, an Alaskan serial killer. It's actually very, very good. Um, but the book, I started it. <laughs> Well, I started it two nights ago, but I was only like 22, 25 minutes into it. So I really started it last night and I drove around from 
20 after 2, 2 20 in the morning until 5 45, trying to get as much of this book done. I have an hour left to, to listen to it. So I will have the book done for tomorrow. The live book club is at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on You Now, which is linked below. So you don't have to have finished the book to join our conversation, our book club, but um, we just ask that you finish the book if you're going to be, um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna guest with us. That's the only thing that we ask. So uh, that's the book that I'm reading right now. I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I, Becky Albertalli actually has a new book out called Kate and Waiting, and I think I might read that next. I will tell you this. I'm really, I really want to make this my July book for Peter's Book Club, but I'm having such a hard time. So for those of you that have watched this channel for a long time, you know how much I loved um, Taylor Jenkins Reads, um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Loved that book. I thought it was such an important book, right? So my friend Tanya and I are always talking about books, and there we don't necessarily read the same thing, but there's some people that overlap that we like. Like we both like Paula Hawkins, we both like ta Taylor Jenkins Taylor Jenkins Reads, we both liked Jackie Collins. So we were in the car the other day, and I had told her that Paula Hawkins' book, new book, who wrote uh, The Girl on the Train and In the Wa Into the Water and things like that. I think those are the only two she's written, actually. I told her that her next book comes out in September, which I'm really excited about. But... Tani was like, when does Taylor Jenkins Reid come out uh, with a new book? Or she, I think she said, when does the woman that wrote that book? Now, Tani has read Daisy and the Six. I haven't. I have it on Audible, but I haven't listened to it yet. And I said, well, she just came out. Or, no, this was like three, this was like before June 1st, because like the date, like the two days before, because I said her book comes out on June 1st. I've already pre-ordered it, and it's called Malibu. And uh, I think it's called Malibu. And, well, I could actually just go in here and look for you right now while I'm talking. So Tani said, oh, I'm going to get it, because she reads everything on the Kindle. She loves her Kindle. Uh, it's called Malibu Rising, and it just came out June 1st. So <laughs> the next day, Tanya literally, like, on June 1st, texted me all day long. She's like, this is the best book I have read in a long... She's like, I cannot put it down. And she finished the book in one setting. She, like, just was on her couch and on the patio out front. She just loved the book so much. And she just, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning, she was like, I'm done. I finally... She loved it so much. So, um, but I'm thinking about maybe making that my, my July book. We'll see. Because I want to pick a book that's really, really good. So, let's get back into this. What did I read for May? Well, the first book that I completed in May was Rush of Blood by Mark Billingham. Now, I'm not going to get into a long discussion about what this book is about. It was about three couples. Was it three couples? Yeah. Three couples that are all in, they're from the United, they're from the UK, and they're in Sarasota, Florida, and it's their last day, and a girl goes missing while they're there. A girl that's from, I think she's from Atlanta, and she and her mother are staying in, like, the same resort area that they are. The whole book is really told in retrospect, kind of back and forth, of when these couples, they, like, all meet while they're on this trip and kind of, like, get to become friends, and then they're all from London area, at the London area, and then they go home, and I don't even know why I'm getting in talking about this book. I gave it a two and that was generous. Okay. The writing was okay. Um, I mean, I gave it a two because this author was I, I don't, consistent enough to write a book that was this long. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Um, it was about some very serious topics and I don't think that they were handled in necessarily um, a fragile way. And um, it just was... It, it was really like walking through like swamped for me to get through with this book. And this book got me stuck for like the entire month. And uh, I really had a hard time reading it. In fact, this book was so dark for me. And the book I had read before was Central Park, which was my book club book for April. And that book kind of lingered with me because if you, if you read that book, um, it ends much differently than what the book is about. And so that really kind of stuck with me. And then the book before that was Last Call, um, which was our true crime book for, um, was that was our true crime book for April. And so it was like, I had read these three kind of like dark books right in a row and I was ready for something else. So anyway, I gave uh, Rush of Blood two stars. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I really wouldn't. It was just, it was, the characters were uninteresting. Um, it was really about trying to find out who had done it. It's like, it was funny because when I read the reviews, it said this book is not a thriller. It's not about trying to find out. Who, that would be the only reason that you would read this book is to find out who did it. And you do find out out at the end, but like the very end, like on the last page. And then you don't even really know if that's what it is. And then the whole thing is kind of twisted at the end. It's so weird. It's just so bizarre. So anyway, it's like this twist at the end that doesn't belong there. Do you ever know books that do that? Like, it's not fitting to, like, the rest of the book. Like, it builds you up getting to know these characters, and then the character com 
changes and it's somebody completely different in like the last five pages. That's what it was like. And you're like, what? Like, why did you just do this so you would have some surprise ending because the book is so bad? And I was surprised. It got pretty good reviews on it. So then the next book I read, and I was so excited, was book 19 from the Miss Fortune series by uh, Jana DeLeon. Now, y'all know I love Miss uh, Fortune, okay, Reading. For, and I, this was the 19th book, and the book is called Fortune Funhouse. And it was about, uh, so there was a carnival in sinful Louisiana, and they uh, find a body in the funhouse. And it is, I don't want to say any more than that. If you're not reading the Fortune, uh, fun, uh, Fortune Reading books, you need to be reading them. They're so fantastic. They're good mysteries. I mean, they're hard to figure out. And um, the writing is incredible. The characterization, I mean, the characters, that, uh, uh, whenever the, oh, the Audible always says, Jane, Jaina, De Leon. So I don't know. Maybe I'm mispronouncing it. But, um, and somebody said, I, I read on like uh, the Facebook group, somebody was like, I don't like the narrator. It's the only reason I listen to them on Audible because they're fast reads. I mean, I listen to a lot of Audible, right? But Cassandra Campbell, who narrates these books, is absolutely fantastic. I said this was going to be a short <laughs> video, didn't I? Anyway, it was good. Five stars. I loved it. Okay. The next book that I uh, read was, it was this graphic novel by Alex Sanchez. Alex Sanchez wrote the Rainbow Boys trilogy. I, I don't know if you've read it. I think it was nominated by, for a, a Lambda Award, a Lammy Award. I really th uh, think it's an important trilogy. Um, it's very much about kids coming out. It was way ahead of its time in talking about gender and sexuality and things like that um, and, and identification. It was such an important trilogy. And I, and I have to tell you, no offense to Alex Sanchez, the covers of the books when I read them were so like mm, just cheesy that I almost did not read them, right? But they are so fantastically done. The books are so fantastically done. So anyway, he um, wrote this book and it is illustrated by Julie Marrow and it is uh, really beautiful. I, I gave it four stars, I believe, didn't I? I gave it four stars just because um, I've read some graphic novels that just blew me away, like the Alice Oseman uh, Heartbreaker graphic novels blew me away, and Bloom I really, really enjoyed, and Linda Berry, my, the cartoonist that I love. Uh, this book was fantastic, but it was a little, I will tell you this, okay? If you are looking for um, a gay uh, graphic novel that has some kind of superhero elements to it, this is the book for you, okay? Because there, I think this will be book one in many books because it ends with um, it's going to open up to other like storylines down the road. But there's a superhero aspect in this that I did not expect when I started reading it. So anyway, it's called You Brought Me the Ocean and it's, it's absolutely beautifully illustrated. So I had a great time with this. And it's also a lot about coming out. I mean like it's all about coming out and finding somebody and then telling your friends and it's just it's a really interesting novel family it's a big part of family is in here as well and a drug, coming out to family and things like that so another book for pride month this would be a good this would be a good pick okay the next book that i read i've been putting this off for a while and i don't know why but i was ready to read some cozies y'all know i love cozy mysteries okay i call them cozies and my friend tanya she just dies laughs oh, i love when you call them cozies but when you read cozies you call them cozies you know what i mean so anyway, I the I got started reading Cozy's last September because I read Dorinda Jones' book, uh, A Bad Day for Sunshine, which actually the sequel to that, or the second book in the series, because Dorinda uh, Jones writes series. The second book, which is called A Good Day for Chardonnay, <laughs> in the second book in the series, it comes out um, in July, and I can't wait to read it. So people had recommended to me, well, I, that was the first Cozy that I ever read, and that just set it all off, and now I love all these different, you know, I'm reading, well, I don't know if you consider them all Cozies, but of course, you know, Jana DeLeon, uh, the Stephanie Plum series by Jana Ivanovich I'm reading, now this, which is the Charlie Davidson series, Allison Brooks, and the, Li the Haunted Library series, what are other uh, Cozies? There's like, I think there's like six series I'm currently reading. I told Mel today on the phone, my book club partner, I said, the problem with series is this, is that I don't want to read anything else. I just want to read like all 26 books of the Stephanie Plum series. You know what I mean? I just want to stay with that and just keep on reading it. So this book was highly recommended to me, the series, and it's First Grave on the Right, Charlie Davidson, and this is the first book. Charlie Davidson, and I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about it because I don't want to ruin it for you because it is so good. Charlie Davidson is the, 
the Grim Reaper, okay? Not just a Grim Reaper, not like that movie or that TV show that I loved back in the day, Dead Like Me, but she is the Grim Reaper, okay? And uh, she's also a private investigator that works, and that nobody knows that she is except for a few people, and um, she works with the police department because she's always got these people around her that want them to want her to solve how they were killed, right? There's also a subplot to this, like a romantic subplot that I'm sure will feed through the entire series. Oh, Magical Midlife Madness by uh, KF Brain. That's another one that I'm reading. That's a really good one if you like like paranormal stuff. Um, I think I'm in the third book in that series. I've been like reading these series like crazy. Do you remember, if you go back, I hated series. I hated them. Now I'm like obsessed with reading these. So anyway, um, it was so good. I gave it five stars, it was fantastic. And then the last book that I read in May was Clara and the Sun um, by Kazuo Ishiguro. And um, I just did my full review of this, so you guys can go check that out. I am having such a hard time. I'm trying to give this to people. <laughs> like I loved the ending of this book and they're like, is it the one about the robots? I'm like, I tried to give it to my good Judy Tanya. She's like, that's the robot book that you were talking about. She's like, I don't like books about robots. I tried to give it to my neighbor. She's like, I don't read anything science fiction. I'm like, well, it's not really science fiction, but it kind of is. Like, you can't say it's not science fiction because it is does take place in the future, you know? So anyway, I'm like, okay, who am I going to give this book to? So I think I'm going to donate it to the library. It's brand new. My copy is in perfect condition. I'm not real big about keeping books anymore, although I have an entire bookshelf of books because I, I do love how it looks. There's so many books that I want to keep that are really important to me, but I think I need to go through the bookshelf. That would be a good video over here, wouldn't it? I need to go through the bookshelf, and I need to get rid of books that I've read that I don't feel like I need to hold on to. You know, books that you read that you don't have any sentimental value to, and donate them to the library. I, I think what I'm going to start doing for Peter's Book Club is the book that I read for that month, donated it to the library, because they're typically on the bestseller list. Um, even if I listen to it on Audible, I always buy a hard uh, back copy to show in videos and stuff. So, yeah, I think that would be nice to go to the library so somebody else can read that. Anyway, let me know what you think um, about those books in the comment section below. Now, June, I got big plans for June. Okay, well, I got to hit at least 50 um, total so that for the rest of the, the year, I only have to, read, well, I have to read 50 books and match that. But I would really like to get to like 55 or 60. That would make me really, really happy. So if I could read like, in like January, I think, like January or February, I read like 17 books. So it's possible. Um, I've been really, really enjoying reading again since it is, you know, nice outside again, being on the front porch. And I'm actually, well, well, there's a book I'm reading, like a, a paperback book that I'm reading, and I have a graphic novel that I'm reading, a Linda Berry book, and then I can't remember what the name of the, the paperback book is. I never can when I'm talking about it, and I never can remember the name of the author either, but it's the guy that wrote Mysterious Skin. Anyway, um, what is his name? Josh something. But um, I, I do want to ask you this. If you guys know of any, um, uh, uh, what's it called, readathons that are happening this summer that I can participate in, will you put it in the comment section below that I can look them up? Um, I really want to do some readathons this summer. I'm very excited about it. So let me know in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.